Well, my perspective would be that we are not bound by what others say about themselves or about reality. We are bound by what we experience of, of Christ, of reality, of the search for God and so forth. No? I think the Pope made a very interesting distinction that I would formulate in terms that, let's say, a, a, a positive atheist is someone who who doesn't search anymore, no? He has decided God does not exist and there is no more search. But an agnostic is a person who says, I don't know, I cannot formulate the final answers to the ultimate questions, but I keep searching. I think, and the Pope has spoken very positively about this keep searching, no? And he said, in that sense, uh, an agnostic who is searching is, is better, and this is the proper expression, than uh, a believer who thinks that he knows everything and he's not searching anymore. You know? So it's part of the human growth that we keep searching. And I think uh, the, the challenge for, for those, let's say, whether humanists or agnostics or whatever, is whether they are searching or not. If they are searching, they are on a good path, no? and uh, Cardinal Ravasi said that for an agnostic to search, this is already the beginning of, of reaching the, the end. No? So I would say, I would, I would encourage the young, okay, you have to be honest with your heart, no? what you believe, what you don't believe, uh, without making it absolutely a rational process. No? It's, it's the totality of the person that is involved. No? But uh, what is important is that you keep searching. No? no human answer will ever be perfect. No? And that's why we keep growing, we keep searching. And I think this is what is going to define how honest and how mature or how growing we are. No? Well, Gian, I think it has touched on a few networks that are very necessary, and I am very positive to that. And it's developing very well. Uh, I am not so particular about the details like the Secretary for Justice has been, because he has been to several meetings. But I think it's a very good initiative that started with his predecessor, and he continues in a very dynamic way. And I think it's a sample of, of how international networks can can support each other and help each other in understanding uh, particular situations, in exchanging know-how and in finding ways to solve the problems. No? Because the problems are basically are problems of people, not, not so much problems of... I'm not the, the, that interested in knowing how the minds work, no? but I am very interested in how the, the people who work in the minds suffer and and the limitations they have, and the exposure they have to ill health or many other things, yeah? and the abuse that they are receiving. No? So that would be something that interests me very much. To tell the truth, if I speak from uh, my heart, I would say I'm not worried about numbers. I think the society has to be concerned about quality, so that the service we offer to the people is is good service, is a quality service, for the good of the church, for the good of the people, for the good of the gospel. No? Now, vocations, uh, as you know, depend on so many factors. No? For instance, the fact that in the past, when we had many vocations, many of the vocations came from big families. No? Even, even my own, I am uh, one of four brothers. No? At least we were four. No? But now when the, you see that the, the families have one or two children, no? in the West, in most of the countries in Asia, this is beginning. In Japan, certainly, it's already a fact. Uh, there are other countries where there are still a lot of children. China is, is trying to, to control the number of children. In Africa, there are still plenty of children. So. Uh, there are factors like this, no? not only secularization, but the family, the concern for the possibility and the image of uh, commitment for life, etc. So there are factors 
that are social, anthropological, uh, and that we cannot do much about, about them. And therefore, that the number of vocations is reduced now in some, in some regions of the world is only natural. It happened only in the past also. Hmm? The church was, began in the Middle East, then it, it grew through the southern Europe and North Africa, and then it, it moved to Europe. So these demographic changes have taken place before. You know? There were less vocations and then Islam grew. Now it's moving from Europe to Asia and Africa, and I think this is a, a good movement, you know? because these are less, less known parts of the world that have a reservoir of humanity that that we need in the church. No? So therefore, the vocations will depend. No? We have now a good number of vocations in Africa and Asia, in some countries in Asia, much less in Europe, uh, in the United States. In Latin America, it's, uh, we have, but also uh, there are different traditions there of perseverance and so forth. Uh, but. Uh, I liked a letter that uh, a provincial in a, in a solid province, but that is diminishing, he wrote to the province saying, Some, sometimes we, we are concerned because we are moving from being 250 to 200 and so forth. No? Okay, this is, this is fine, but I think we should imagine that we are only 12. And then the question is, if we are only 12, where do we put these 12? And I think that's, that's our real question. No? If I take vocations as the gift that, that God gives us for his mission. No? It's for the work of God. So if God gives us 50, where do we put this 50? If God gives us 12, where do we put this 12? No? If God gives us 300, where do we put this 300? No? But knowing that the mission is always bigger than the Society of Jesus. And that's why we need, we need so much collaboration and uh, working with others, networking, because the, we have understood that the mission is not the mission of the Society of Jesus, it's the mission of God. No? It's God who wants to transform the world, no? not us. I think this, this is faithful to the mind of our founder, St. Ignatius. No? So he was at an age where the world began to expand. They discovered America, they, they became a little more conscious that there is a whole continent in the south, that is Africa, that Asia is much bigger than, than what they knew, etc. And, and he realized that the mission of God ex, ex, expanded. No? And so he, he conceived the society as a society for the service of the mission of God, yeah. therefore without limits. And the organization of provinces according to countries at the beginning were the closest provinces, so Spain, Germany, France, then later Italy, you know. And then we moved to overseas, you know, to, to other, other areas of the world. But his, his mind and his spirit was what matters is the whole world. You know. And uh, therefore, for administrative purposes, for practical purposes, we organize ourselves in provinces or regions or whatever. No? But this is only a help for, to, to manage because one person cannot know uh, 20,000 or 18,000 or 12,000. No? It's impossible. So we have to, to be realistic and concrete. But the spirit, so the... the the reality is always concrete. That's why we went through years of inculturation and uh, giving importance to the local culture. Because we always work in the local cultures, in this ground, no? And if we don't have the feet in the ground, we will not be able to work, no? In any way, no? So we have to understand the people, understand the culture, use the language, and Ignatius was very concrete on that. But our heart remains universal, no? Our heart is, we want to, to collaborate with God in His mission. No? And therefore, there are no limits. That, no. For instance, poverty has no, no nationality. Poverty is universal. And uh, goodness is universal. 
and suffering is universal. So our vocation is also universal. No? Uh, the, the need of service and the need to, to respond to, to challenge is universal. And I think this is the way the, the Society of Jesus was born, and I think is that this is the way the Society of Jesus should continue. Yeah. I think self-sustenance has been always a principle of apostolic life in the society. No? Uh, when uh, someone is given a mission, he has to, to concern himself immediately with sustenance, viability, and the future. So build the basis. That's why it's very common when Jesuits go to a new place, immediately they start buying a piece of land here and there for, to make the apostolate, the future apostolate possible. No? And immediately build uh, a human and economic system that will make it sustainable. No? Uh, I don't think at any time in the society the great missionaries or the great Jesuits have uh, lived depending on others. No? Immediately they build a network of benefactors, of friends, of people who are going to sustain either in terms of formation or in terms of uh, support or in terms of financial help, no? because otherwise we, we, we just cannot work. So this is part of the life. I think there are two lifelines in the society, vocations and financial help. No? And I went to Japan in 1961, so I had Father Rupe as provincial four years. No? And he did a tremendous work for, for this. No? He spent great parts of the year, so we miss him in Japan because he, he was absent very often. But he was uh, building benefactors and, and attracting vocations to Japan, and he built the Japanese province. No? This is the kind of sustenance we have. No? Now, in the modern times, this has to continue, but now we have much more solidarity between provinces. So there is much, mutual, uh, mo much more mutual help in terms of personnel, finances, for edu formation, send professors for a temporary or a, or a permanent service and so forth. So, and this is a good development. But uh, the responsibility is going to be always on the one who receives the mission. No? Well, I am very, very happy that the provincial Orovator uh, welcomed the idea very positively, no? immediately. He, and immediately he thought of, of two persons who could contribute to, to the institute and so forth. So I was very happy with that because I think it's an important part. No? It has been always important for the society uh, historical research for the society and for the church because we learn a lot from history. Yeah. Uh, for instance, just as an aside, this year we will have the synod on neo evangelization. I hope it starts with what have we learned from the old evangelization? No? Things that we have done well and things that we have done wrong. Hmm? We, we, the, I mean, doing something wrong is not the end of the world. It's, it's material to learn, no? and I hope we learn. No? So the same with the, the research of history is, is a great opportunity to learn. Um, but I thought that as we move to the year 2014, which is anniversary of our restoration, I think this is, is about time, and we might even uh, maybe a little late, but it's about time to to allow every continent to interpret its own history. Because until now, it has been European historians interpreting Asia, interpreting Africa, interpreting uh, Latin America and so forth. And this is, not, this is not adequate, because Europe has its own prejudices, its own lens, its own narrow views also. No? Uh, so I thought it's very important that the Africans interpret African history and that the Asians interpret Asian history. The Latin Americans have done it already. They have a couple of very good historians who have reinterpreted the history of Latin America. And I can tell you it sounds very different from the history seen by Europe. In the whole society, I find 
I share it particularly a concern for really strengthening the formation of uh, young men, no? particularly in Africa and Asia. Because if, if here we have many vocations, it means that here we have to train the leaders of the church of the future. No? Not to fill in gaps in Europe, but Europe will have its own voice in the future also. It will be different from the one we had in the past. So, but I think the present crisis that is affecting Europe will be overcome somehow and Europe also will have something to say. But Africa will have a lot to say, you know, and Asia. So therefore, uh, formation continues to be a, a great concern of all. And I find that this concern is shared and that gives me hope that we can do as much as possible for it. It's not easy because we, it requires a lot of input, a lot of generosity from the provincials and so forth, but I hope it will happen.